Today we're going to be comparing the Korg ARP 2600 FS to the Behringer 2600. Although they're very, very similar in features, there are some interesting differences, and that's what we're going to be covering in this video. First, I'd like to go through and point out the different components and perhaps that's more easily done on the Korg 2600 because the panel's larger. From left to right, you have a preamp, an envelope follower, a ring modulator, three VCOs, a voltage controlled filter, two envelope generators, voltage controlled amplifier, output mixer, and reverb. On the bottom you have noise generator, voltage processor that is a couple of inverting mixers plus a lag processor. Finally you have the sample and hold and the electronic switch. On the Korg 2600 FS, you also have speakers, which are not on the 2600. The 3620 keyboard has a number of controls that are available on the 2600, but in a different location. There is an aftertouch foot switch, a portamento foot switch, an interval latch foot switch, a trigger switch to select either single or multiple, a key latch so that you can press a key and it will stay on. In the 2600FS there's also a built-in arpeggiator and sequencer which is a nice feature that's not available on the 2600 from Behringer. Finally you have a low frequency oscillator with depth control and delay that is integrated with aftertouch from the keyboard. You also have portamento which can be turned on or off it can be turned on or off with a foot switch as well and there's also a manual push button that will allow you to interactively cut it on and off on a per note basis. Those are all the controls on the 2600FS. Now let's look at the oscillators between the 2600 from Behringer and from Korg. First you'll notice on oscillator 1 there are two outputs, sawtooth and square. There's no pulse width control. On the Behringer there are two outputs but there is a pulse width control. Oscillator 2 is our most robust oscillator and it has four outputs as well as pulse width and pulse width modulation. You have the same features on the Behringer, but you have the addition of sync on this oscillator too. Oscillator 3 has only two outputs, but you'll notice it has pulse width on the Korg. Oscillator 3 is pretty much the same as oscillator 2, which includes the four outputs and sync, which are missing from the Korg. Now let's look at the filter. The filter section is very similar between the Behringer and the Korg. You have the frequency control, coarse fine, and resonance. You have five audio inputs. You have three control voltage inputs for the filter cutoff. You also have two different filter circuits to choose from that represent the two filters that were used by ARP over the lifetime of the product. The second filter is known as the post-lawsuit filter. The only difference between 
the Behringer and the Korg and the filter section is that the keyboard control voltage input has a fader on it whereas there is no fader only a jack for the Korg version. Next we have the envelope generator you have an ADSR and an AR pretty much all of the features are the same between the Behringer and the Korg. The one feature that's different is an enhancement on the Behringer and that is you can have the normal time scale for attack and decay but you can also make those times faster by flipping this down normal and you can also make it slower so you've got 2x normal speed which is slower and 0.5 normal speed which is faster and you have that feature on both the ADSR and the AR. The output sections are largely the same between the Korg and the Behringer. The main difference is that the Behringer uses a digital implementation of the spring reverb and the Korg uses an actual spring reverb. Next let's look at this section of the 2600. On the Behringer it's found in the lower left hand corner. You have the preamp which is identical between the two units in terms of controls and features. Similarly the envelope follower is identical as well as the ring mod. Next let's look at the noise generator and the voltage processor and in short these two are identical in function and controls on both the Korg and the Behringer. Now let's look at the sample and hold. Here's the sample and hold. The controls and features are the same as they are on the Korg except that you've got these blinky lights and one of the things I want to point out is the external clock in to the sample and hold does not control the electronic switch. The electronic switch is always under the control of this LFO that's normally the clock for the sample and hold. The only other thing I want to point out is that there's an extra feature in that there's a volume control on the headphones for the headphone out. The final controls we need to cover in the Behringer 2600 are in the lower left hand corner. These controls correspond to what you would see on the Korg 2600 on the 3620 keyboard. You have your portamento controls, uh, portamento time, on off, momentary, and there's also a jack on the back of the 2600 for a foot switch for this portamento control. There's also a jack back there for the interval latch. Also, you'll find the MIDI inputs and outputs uh, both DIN configuration and USB on the back panel. Also the dimmer for these lights is back there so you could have them all the way off if you wanted that. We also have the LFO controls, LFO speed, vibrato delay, vibrato depth. You have the outputs from the LFO you also have the gate and trigger outputs. In this case, they're from the MIDI out, not from the keyboard because there is no keyboard. You have keyboard CV and upper voice for the duophonic operation. In fact, you can switch between monophonic and duophonic 
with this switch. The trigger mode, either single or multiple, is also here. And we've got an extra control for repeat. You can have it repeat when you press the key, or you can have it constantly repeat and self-triggering. One thing I wanted to include was a visual of the waveforms from VCO2 on the oscilloscope. We have the Behringer sine wave output, Korg sine wave output. Ignore the fact that this was shifting. And let's listen to first the Behringer, then the Korg. <laughs> Now the Korg. The Behringer. The Korg. Now let's shift waveforms and listen to this triangle from the Behringer and the Korg. The Behringer and the Korg and shift to the sawtooth, the Behringer, the Korg, the Behringer, the Korg. Shift waveforms. The pulse width is set up to a square on both of these oscillators. And let's listen to the Behringer and the Korg. The Behringer and the Korg. So that gives you a sense that the outputs of the two instruments in terms of the oscillator waveforms are very similar. In conclusion, we have the Korg 2600FS and the Behringer 2600. In terms of extra features, the most important features to me are the oscillator sync plus outputs and of course the lights. The Korg 2600FS, the main features that it has that the Behringer 2600 does not have are of course the speakers, which are very handy and they sound good. The fact that there's a, a real spring reverb. Also the arpeggiator and sequencer that's built into the 3620 keyboard. Of course the fact that there is a keyboard with the machine is also a tremendous value added. So which one would I want if I could only have one of them? Ignoring the difference in the value of the two, I would choose the 2600 FS. One of the reasons for that is I like the larger format. I've spent many, many hours back in the 70s and early 80s working on a borrowed 2600 from a good friend of mine. It has a special place in my heart. So that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching to this point.